and Nicole Swan from Create Cooking School at the Stanley Marketplace in Denver, Colorado. Thanks, both of you, for being on. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks so much. I am excited to talk to both of you. Real quick, as always, just uh, some housekeeping items. Get on the Best Served Podcast Facebook page, COVID-19 restaurant information thread. Comment with following so you can get notifications. Trying to hustle as much as possible, get real-time information, plus just a lot of good resources on there currently. And you can stay connected to what's happening as we all need to know what's happening without going so deep into news and social media that we lose our shit. Because I've done that a couple of times. So that's a place where you can get information in the hospitality industry. Also go to the hashtag 86 coronavirus thread on the Best Surf Podcast Facebook page as well. Direct donations happening there. Put in your Venmo, your PayPal. It's time for that hospitality we've showed for years and years and years through the industry to get paid back to us. So those are a couple of things to look at. I want to tell a story that last night I was thinking about the two of you because we have a little Facebook uh, group that Betsy started and we've been just doing daily. Here's what we're cooking live in the group, including the fire alarm going off three times a night every time I cook because I I know that color equals flavor. Yeah. And so I'm smoking that shit out all the time. But damn it, we're just going to show people it's real. Boys are screaming and crying and fighting over the toy last night. But that's just our life right now. And so last night I was making loco moco, one of my favorites, a Hawaii, yeah, classic, right? With ground beef, yeah, the yeah. jasmine rice, fried eggs, some kimchi. Love it. And I was channeling you guys because I wanted to give people a little bit more depth like you would. And I gave them some techniques and tips on properly cooking rice so you don't get that nasty, over starchy, pasty rice. Right. And also how to pull that stem off and tell the color of the stem pull the little belly button there to tell if an avocado is right. So I was feeling you guys last night. So I'm excited to talk to you guys. Maybe we'll even find a way into some tips for people as well. Let's go back two weeks ago. Now I can't believe it's been two weeks, but two weeks ago, shit's hitting the fan. Brad, we'll start with you. You realize that you're going to have to make some pivots, potentially close down the business. Talk about that moment just kind of for you personally and as an owner operator. For sure, and thanks for having me on again. Uh, I know it was like three weeks ago that we did the podcast, um, and man, what a what a change that has happened even since then. But, um, you know, having, uh, hearing the news and seeing it kind of build up, uh, the Stanley Marketplace has been very, very transparent and um, everything that's been going on, uh, and they've been using the resources ever since this, uh, this pandemic started and um <clears throat> so there were a couple meetings even um a week before uh up to like two weeks before uh leading up to our eventual closure um and i just saw the severity of everything and how quickly it was ramping up uh and we had gotten news the morning of two saturdays ago i want to say yeah um and Chef Nicole scheduled work all day today, um, but uh, we we had gotten the news Saturday uh, morning that they were thinking about potentially closing down the Stanley Marketplace um, due to a uh, an order, or not even a mandate at that time um, through the city of Aurora. And I remember thinking and discussing with uh, my business partner Diego. Um, you know, what What would be the correct path here? And our whole thought process through the entire thing is uh, two things. It's one, make sure that our employees are taken care of, and two, that we have enough working capital on the other side of this to be able to reopen. Um, so we decided pretty quickly uh, that what, what we knew was gonna come, which was gonna be uh, a mass amount of layoffs in the industry um, and I wanted my employee, especially since we were just a year and three months old, um, you know, starting to turn a profit, uh, that I, I, we had to let them go or lay them off. Um, and I told them immediately, and I, hopefully uh, Nicole can vouch for me here, but we told them as it was happening, why we were doing it, uh, and to file for an employment as quickly as possible. Like, do not wait. Um, and I'm glad I 
in hindsight, I am glad I said that because the day after, or maybe a day and a half after that is when <clears throat> restaurants were shut down for uh, dining services. Uh, so I was glad that um, my staff was able to get on, yeah. get it on the forefront of the unemployment. Uh, that was a really tough day. I, that, I mean, I can go ahead and just label it as, you know, shitty day 2020, you know? <laughs> so uh, that, that was a tough day and we just um, let our employees work, work the day if they wanted to. Um, and then after that, you know, we couldn't stress enough, like this was to protect you, uh, our employees. We wanted them to have some type of income. Um, and it, it pained me that we weren't able to, you know, um, pay two, three, four weeks uh, while we, we try to ride this thing out. But um, looking at the severity of things now and how things are ramping up, uh, I'm glad we did what we did. So, yeah, that's a that's such a hard, hard decision to have to make. And I'm glad you actually did it timely because then we've heard a lot of horror stories since about trying to get on unemployment and just unaware of what's happening and people clamoring to figure things out. So, uh, Nicole, from your perspective, I really like that I have both of you on uh, because sometimes there's definitely two camps. There's employees trying to protect their business and employers, excuse me, and employees feeling like they're getting the shaft because this is crazy. I mean, this is unprecedented. So I'm glad to have you both on. Nicole, your perspective kind of from the other side, back to that time, the communication. I love hearing that from Raz. The communication was there. Talk about that moment for you personally. Um, it was just really hard. Uh, I, it, it was coming. It was like you saw everything going down in the entire world. So you kind of knew that it was going to hit us eventually. It wasn't like it was a surprise. I don't like think that anyone had any like hard feelings about it happening because we knew that it was going to happen eventually we just didn't know when i was hoping for like at least another week that we had like i was like all right we got one more week on this and then of course we're gonna get shut down eventually but i mean it's no hard feelings you know raz was great basically communicating the whole way through i mean they do everything him and diego do everything for us that they possibly can at any given time and that's really really nice i mean i didn't leave a job of 13 and a half years with like you know that was corporate to come work for them because i you know it, it was something that means a lot to me. So the fact that they always go far above and beyond for all of the staff is very heartwarming. It's a family. It's not just a job. Yeah, I understand that for sure. And were you then able to to get yourself into unemployment quick, quickly? What was that just process I, I, like for you? Whew, um, so yes. unemployment, I have gotten all of my information except my pin that has not shown up at my house whatsoever at all. Which I, I still don't have, and today's supposed to be the first day that we can file. So I don't know where this pin is, and I don't know. I've never applied for unemployment before. I've never had to. I have no idea whatsoever at all. So this is all new to me. Like, I've been in the industry for so long and never had to deal with this before. So, like, this is really different. And I'm like, oh, my God, where's this pin? Like, can I get in there? I'm supposed to do this filing thing. And then they came out with that post that I'm sure everyone has seen going across the internet. That's like, don't apply for unemployment yet. Do it after we figure out what's going on. And I'm like, well, do we refile then? Do we have to do something more even if we've already started a claim? I, I don't have any idea. And like, uh, luckily my, my boyfriend's mother is very, very nice and go, comes in as my mom half the time because I don't, my parents both passed away. So like, I don't have anyone to call and be like, hi, I don't know what to do. Someone help, please. <laughs> At the same time. So she mm -hmm. is bad said because I just call her freaking out all the time. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't wait for these crazy memes there and come out where this, this pin is going to be like, where's Waldo? Because everyone's talking about their pins going to show up in the mail. <laughs> and that's just unbelievable. And it is very just, it's just awkward. Like it's so awkward maybe for anybody to file for employment, but especially in industry where things evolve and change so quickly that you always have the opportunity for another job pretty fast in this industry. You're not laid off of a big corporate job where you might be two or three months, just the normal attrition and cycle of hiring that you get a new job. 
So we're just not very used to it. And so I can not say too um, that for those of you that have filed unemployment, um, it's a two-step process. Uh, number one is you actually filing for unemployment. Number two is an employer verification that happens about a week later. Uh, so, and that's usually in a paper form. Okay, so this is like they might as well send it on a messenger pigeon. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> as soon as soon as uh, employers do get that, they should be filling it out, verifying it, and sending it right back to the Department of Labor, uh, which could take another three or four days. So, um, I can say that that's been mailed out as of the beginning of this week. So, I mean, that's my part, but just letting you guys know that that's why I might seem a little bit longer is that verifying part. Gotcha. So it is the responsibility of the employer then to verify that gets sent off before this pin will then Correct. get sent back. Yeah. Okay. So that level of communication and turnaround is going to be really, really key. It's probably another thing that people in the restaurant hospitality industry aren't used to on the employer side doing at massive scale and a lot of them not being at their restaurants are probably not checking the mail. So maybe that's the PSA that you can take away from this episode. Employers check your mail, get that turned around for your employees. So they get this fucking pin already. Let's get everyone this pin so we can get this figured out. Uh, now, Nicole, I want to touch on you because you said you did have a, a, a second gig that actually is keeping you working a little bit, which I'm thankful. I'm sure you're thankful for that because a lot of people have that just that little <laughs> bit of safety net. Uh, talk about that and maybe how that's been disrupted and or how that's keeping you motivated because you got a little something coming in. Um, it's nice because I get to stay busy. Um, I, I work for a booking agency called Over Easy Booking. Um, and we're basically after this, um, the whole world's going to kind of change a little bit, especially in the music industry. Um, so basically what we're doing is we are revamping the entire company to facilitate whatever we need to do once this comes back up and running. What we can do for the artists, what we can ensure for them for the future, and then basically just kind of redoing everything that we want to accomplish as goals for them. And then basically waiting it out to just kind of like waiting to see where we can go once this all starts back up again. So I've been doing a lot of like administrative stuff, a lot of computer work, a lot of like rebuilding things on the internet, but it's been nice to have something, one, to keep my mind off of everything. And then two, just, you know, a little something to do, which is, which is awesome. Yeah. Even just getting a couple bucks flowing in, just sets your mind at least, at least a little bit on, on at ease, excuse me. So uh, I want to touch on that. The future you talked about a little bit, there is millions of people working in the hospitality industry that are displaced currently. All right. There's also going to be tens of thousands of restaurants operations that don't reopen after this. It's going to be a very different landscape. I'm interested because I've heard a couple different things. I've heard people on the restaurant side being like, well, now we're not going to have labor issues anymore because there's going to be so many people that need jobs. I'm very concerned about that thinking, very concerned because you're starting to get into a a real estate buyers and sellers market, which is not good for people ever. So that that's one thing I want to put in your guys' head. The, the second thing then is I'm afraid that a lot of really talented people in the hospitality industry are going to be forced to go do something else right now and go, I don't know that I'm going to go back to the hospitality industry. It's a little too volatile. This has a little more security. It's more consistent. I can work from home. Imagine that. So I want to touch on that a little bit. Uh, Raz, I want to start with you kind of being on more the operator side and, and thinking about that a little bit. What does happen when we come back? Are we going to potentially lose talent? How are you thinking about that? Because I know you're a deep thinker and I'm interested in your thoughts. Um, that's, a, that's a really difficult question to try to comprehend right now. I mean, and that's I think that's what uh, a lot of business owners are um, especially in the in, in the industry, um, are struggling with now. You know, how do we bounce back from this? And um, because the, the whole landscape's completely changed now, it's not a. Um, I don't think it should return the way it was before. There's no reason, and this is all, all personal views here. There's no reason why the, one of the world's most, um, uh, you know, 
main industries can fall so quickly, especially overnight. Um, and millions of people just immediately out of work with no no safety net, no coverage, no anything. Um, so I'm working on trying to <laughs> comprehend how we come back from this, whether it be our recreational fishing school, a bar, or full on restaurants to where our employees uh, are covered um, and they do have these safety nets like a lot of other employers uh, offer, especially for professionals. I mean, one of the things I think that frustrates me in the industry, uh, the professionalism part kind of started to fade out. Uh, meaning like we were just looking for people to fill up the, the, the pirate ship, right? Yeah. But, but we are trained professionals and more resources to our employees for financial planning, uh, you know, self-care, healthcare, things like that. I, I think are really, really important for developing them in the future. And uh, maybe what we need to do when we get back from this is offer those things again. I think uh, we talked about uh, Jensen in, in the podcast um, about my, my chef who, you know, whooped my ass in the shape. He was a teaching chef. You know, the managers that were um, uh, equal to him were teaching managers. I think we need to get back to being um, the role, being a professional role and being a teaching role. Uh, so it's for the betterment of our employees, for uh, for sustainability with them, as far as within the company, and for future growth, uh, I feel like we really need to get back into that. As far as the economics of it, I mean, I think there has to be a, a complete redesign here because, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I've had this conversation with a couple of other uh, industry uh, folks, and you know, there, there's. It's a hard one to, like I said, wrap your head around. Um, but we have to get our guests, our customers, um, our diners to understand that they're not paying for the food. They're paying for the, the, the labor, the talent that actually puts that together, the service. Um, that's what we're paying for. Uh, you know, and it, and it, it follows its road, right, from the farm all the way to your table. Uh, there's people getting paid on each, like right down the road, every mile marker, there's a different person that's responsible for that steak hitting your plate or whatever maybe you're eating. So um, I, I think just, I don't know, it's a hard thing to say, but a redesign of the industry, I mean, hospitality has got to start, it's got to be, it's got to be a full circle, not just uh, start to finish. Yeah, it's very true. A lot to unpack and just getting the thinking started, I think is key. To, to all that because the conversation needs to happen. Nicole, for you, are you coming back to the industry? Oh, of course. All right, all right, just wanted to make sure. I just wanted to get that, get that out there. Back. When you think when you think about all of this and now being, again, the, the industry being vulnerable in the way that uh, Raz is talking about, for you personally, what are some of the fail-safe safety net type things that you'd like to see for you to feel confident in the industry as a professional, not just a transient working your way through college or having a side hustle in a restaurant, but truly being a professional. I think people seeing you as a professional is going to be the number one thing. Um, I know that there's a lot of places you can apply for jobs and they're looking for people and they'll be like, oh, you're overqualified or, oh, you have too much experience or, oh, you know, you've, you've done too much. You wouldn't want this job. It's just not for you. And I think that that's one of the hardest things for people to come back to because everyone's going to need someone, but everyone's going to be afraid about paying out because everyone's going to have this financial burden that this is putting on them at the same time. And I think that that's the scariest thing, especially for people that have been in this for so long, because what happens when you go to apply for these jobs and people are like, I really like your experience, but I don't think you're going to be happy because you have done so much more. And it's like, oh, super, but no, like I really need a job um, at the same time. Um, and that's kind of terrifying because I've seen it happen during normal times, never mind you know, during something as bad as this is turned into. So that's yeah, that's the hard thing about the uh, trajectory within the industry, because it's so built on 19 year olds that just need bar money. That a lot of the way that our financial models have been built out to brass point, the, the rethinking the business model and the economics of it is really strained because 
you're complaining on one hand about high turnover, yet you're turning down qualified people that actually have an expectation of being booked as a professional at every level of what that means versus being built around you can pay a 19 year old kid $12 an hour and work them to the bone. And when they're done, you spit them out and grab another 19 year old. So that that's the kind of stuff we have to really take in consideration. It's real conversations that we definitely need to be having. Uh, and I appreciate you guys just thinking about that. This conversation needs to continue to evolve. And I knew I wanted it to talk to you too about it because you guys have very overlapping perspectives and ideals. And you also are coming from slightly different places. So I think that's a good, this conversation needs to happen right here across the industry, I think is really important because we don't have open enough conversations. So I appreciate that for sure. And you alluded to your, your episode for everyone watching, listening, go to the best surf podcast, Facebook page. You'll be able to see Erasmo and Nicole's episode went live last night. Go to bestservepodcast.com. Anywhere you download podcasts, find Best Serve Podcast. Your guys' episode was awesome. Love talking about Menudo with Mom and Guilty Food Pleasures with Raz. Just talking about Marlboro, New York, right? Yeah. And how Nicole was already hustling and building community and cooking into food at 13 when Oh man, all of us were just snot-nosed punks, but Nicole, Nicole already was uh was building that <laughs> community and and in it. So appreciate that. Go check out that episode for sure. We need some levity right now. We need some feels. That was a feel-good episode for sure. So check that out. On the feel-good note, let's get some of your guys' playlists, some of the things that people can consume right now as we have entirely too much time on our hands. So what are you guys doing, cooking, drinking, listening to, watching, reading? Uh, I'll start with you, Raz. What uh, what can we put onto our playlists right now from your recommendations? All right. To expand the mind, um, <laughs> look into uh, – I'm, I'm reading Michio Kaku's book, who's a uh, theoretical physicist uh, okay. called, Parallel, well, <laughs> called Parallel Worlds. Um, the the my, my, my brain is just like – starting to, I don't know, flourish or something. But it's a really cool read, and he puts it in, uh, quote, unquote, layman's terms for the everyday reader. Uh, I've been watching Fuck That's Delicious on Hulu with uh, Action Bronson. Um, who that is, dude's entertaining. That, that's all I watch it for. Uh, obviously, the food bits are, are fun, um, but just seeing what kind of adventures him and his crew get into uh, is, is a fun watch. Um, and then, yeah, Netflix is just streaming something at all at all times. I mean, I keep reverting it's in the background. It. I just keep reverting back to the office. Uh, so I'm like an office fan. So there's like Dwight right there. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you got a uh, physicist and fuck that's delicious. Like the that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. That's what you need. Thank you. Thanks. And yeah. Then, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm really, really into that. Nicole, what about what about you? Um. Um, there is one of my, my favorite podcasts that have been on, I'm a giant nerd, so everything I'm going to say is going to be terrible. Um, Perfect. but one, one of the ones that I've been listening to that we just caught up on and I'm waiting on new episodes to come out is called Dungeons and Daddies. And it's a Dungeons and Dragons podcast with a bunch of guys that are playing dads that like wow. go into like a forgotten realm like a forbidden realm kind of thing and it's absolutely hilarious and that's a lot of fun um other than that like some of my my favorite artists like uh mike herrera has done a cover of goldfinger superman that's streaming all over the place right now um it's acoustic and really really good um nice. very sentimental you kind of want to cry when you listen to it which is not what you get from the you know 90s version while you're playing tony hawk pro skater um yeah yeah. <laughs> um, other than that, um, I don't I don't read books that can't keep me engaged for more than five minutes. So I tend to revert to like teen ish books, which would be I'm reading a uh, Harley Merlin and the Secret Coven because I need something that will keep my attention. And my attention span is all of about two and a half seconds. So um, 
<laughs> so you fit in perfect in the restaurant industry. Oh yeah. Like if I'm not moving, I'm sleeping. Like there's, that's the only two ways that I work. So. <laughs> well, I appreciate you sitting still for half an hour on this. That's great. I, I, I try. <laughs> just anxious. That's all. Um, and then I've just been, I've just been like cooking for my house, basically my, my boyfriend and my sister, we all live together. So I've just been like, I'm bored. Let's do something. I'm going to yeah. make you food. Awesome. Done. <laughs> Therapy for us and nurturing for them, for sure. I want to touch on that real quick with the two of you as well. Uh, a couple things. I mentioned that I've been doing some some live feed stuff. Raz, I know you're doing some live feed stuff. Just whatever we're cooking. We did Loco Moco. We had some pho. Whatever it is that's going on in our house, we're just kind of letting people in a little bit, giving some tips as well. So what are a couple simple things that you're like, oh, if you're cooking at home right now, this is something that you need to be uh, getting on. This is one of your go-to dishes. Maybe give us one or two from each of you. Raz, what's one for you? For sure. Um, and I actually have a, a few, um, I think four live videos now uh, that are, well, I guess just not videos, but uh, I've been doing these cook-alongs um, about two a week right now, just kind of cooking out of our pantry. Uh, and I am starting to figure out that everyone's pantry does not look like mine. Um, <laughs> uh with you know and i'm looking at it like these are essentials like why don't you have flour and eggs and, and water you know um so <clears throat> all they have is toilet paper man <laughs> yeah. lots of toilet paper i was like sell a roll of toilet paper for a five pound bag of flour and um we'll we'll make magic happen but um if you want to check out those videos just kind of go to face our facebook page uh, create cooking school uh but i've been making you know just normal food um everyone's like oh keep it cheap i was like you cannot keep it cheaper than this stuff. So I'm, I'm using a lot of masa, uh, making our own, you know, uh, we made sopes, I made some tortillas, we're gonna do some, you know, gorditas later. Uh, with masa, with masa harina, you can make arepas, you know, pupusas, you know, all different types of stuff. So uh, doing that, I've got some Thai ingredients, so I'm still trying to up my Thai food game. And then Italian food, I mean, I'm making a lot of pasta sauces uh, and, well, lots of pasta. So, I mean, you can't get cheaper than, than this stuff. So, yeah, pasta is a, is a staple right now for sure. For me, it was rice. I keep telling people, like, I don't know why people are freaking out about toilet paper. I bought rice. Yeah. The only thing <laughs> is rice. And I feel good because there's still lots of rice at H Mart when I go in my once a week excursion. Yeah. But I bought a bunch of rice because you can eat that. Oh, for and sure. And I have any rice. I'm leaving beans and rice for apocalyptic times. So like I have a liver because I know that beans and rice is going to be the, the you know, the, that's going to be our dollar later. Um, and uh, <laughs> if it reaches that point, like I'm just saving my 15 pounds of rice and 15 pounds of black beans uh, and pinto beans. Actually, I just have a medley of dry beans. But uh, yeah, beans and rice is definitely a staple that everyone should have in their house. And I was, I was just joking with my wife, um, Mackenzie, because uh, everyone's asking like, oh, I don't have this stuff in my pantry. I was like, well, if I'm going to do live videos from your pantry, it's just going to be like boiled chicken and mashed potatoes at this point. Like, what do we what do we have at our house here? That's what I keep telling people, though. Chicken and rice. Just figure out 10 ways to make chicken and rice. You'll be able to survive. And then you can flare and sauce and condiment and garnish from there. Chicken yeah. and rice. So we make yeah. like Cop and Guy, the uh, Thai style chicken and rice. Nice. Just simple, Love simmered that. rice. Love uh, chicken and uh, rice with just like some garlic and cilantro on it. That's it. Uh, I'm also very interested when I do go out once a week and I'm smart and I'm safe and it feels weird having a mask on and gloves on and stuff at the store. But I'm like, I got two kids. I, I might as well be overkill. What's it going to hurt? You know, I have extra time on my hands, but I go to the produce section and I make little videos. I'm like, over there in the paper goods section and the canned goods section, it looks like an episode of fucking The Walking Dead. Like, it's massacred. Go to the produce section and it's bountiful. So think about that a little bit. It's time for some fruits and vegetables, people. Nicole, what's, uh, what's something that you recommend people cook? Something that you're cooking for your boyfriend and your sister? Well, I was going to say the same thing. I mean, all of the produce section is completely full. I mean, stock up. If you get one bag of carrots, celery, onions, you can make three different types of soup if you want to. You could freeze it, stick it in your freezer. On top of that, you can make stocks with it, like you were saying that you're making for everybody. 
but like while you have it why not like um one day i just went to the store i got one thing of celery one thing of carrots one thing of green peppers one thing of onions and i made gumbo on one side and then i had you know potato soup on the other like there's no reason why you shouldn't be just like you have the time everyone has the time there's not like we can go anywhere so you might as well like pull out the cook that you forgot about and just kind of like flip through it and be like, what can I do with these things? Um, That's instead great. Of getting, you know, the normal frozen foods that every, like you go into the frozen section, it looks like, you know, crazy. There's nothing there. People bought pizza rolls, but they didn't buy vegetables, <laughs> which I don't blame yeah. necessarily a hundred percent, but like at the same time, like there's all this fresh fruits. Like I went and bought like two giant bags of grapes yesterday. Yeah just like i just want to sit there and eat grapes like yep i made uh raisins the other day just roasted dried off some grapes i'm like how can i do grapes four or five 12 different ways i don't know but i'm gonna figure it out i think i'm slightly concerned for our cholesterol and obesity and diabetes come out of this because when i look at what people are buying <laughs> And I know what they're eating. And when I look at what they're not buying, I know what they're not eating. And that scares the crap out of me. So it's important to nourish your body through this time. It's hard. I had my moments where all I was eating was chips because we had four bags of chips in the house. So I had to hide them outside because for some reason in my brain, I'm like, we got a lot of chips to eat. So I better do my part. And now we're meal planning a little bit better, being a little smarter, you know, getting some greens, people, dandelion greens and chard and things that are going to calm your nervous system down is really important. High in vitamin C, high in iron to bring vitamin C is good for the immune system. That's what I've been really preaching to people. So yeah, thanks. chili peppers. Chili peppers. It sweat it all out. Just yeah. like, I mean, I can't tell people, I, I, you know, salt and pepper, there's more spices than just that, okay? Like, <laughs> have, have fun with it. Um, that's why I tell, if you just watch some of my videos, I'm like, this is your sauce, this is kind of a base, like just make it your own. If you want it spicier, add some more. Uh, but you know, we're, yeah, I mean, like, like I said, the, our pantries, I'm sure all look different, but what I think are staples, um, uh, I'm hopefully spreading the message out there that, Hey, look, there's another store right next to, you know, a couple miles down from King Supers called H Mart or Pacific ocean marketplace. Uh, and, and guess what? You'll find a 50 pound bag of rice and all these other ingredients that will just live in your pantry for a while. And you can make just so much food from. So just buy these ingredients. So um, on each of one of my uh, uh, lives, I'm just kind of showing like, okay, yes, I understand that this might not look like your pantry, but if you just go buy it, you'll have it and now you'll know what to make with it. You know, so I don't know. Yeah. Kind of that way. yeah, that's smart. The other thing I've been thinking about is if I do have something in my pantry, thinking about what other people might have and giving them the alternatives, you know, you might not have broccoli rob but you probably have frozen broccoli flowerettes in your freezer right now, or the medley of cauliflower, broccoli and peas and carrots, you can use that in place. So giving people that, because for us, that's easy. Yet for most people, they have no idea that this broccoli rob could easily be broccoli in the pho that you're making. So thinking about that, the other thing that I've actually been doing something for you to think about in those live videos is the one pan pickup. We're very good as chefs of going cool. Here's the four pans I'm cooking with at the same time. So I've been thinking about the one pan pickup, the one pot pickup a lot for people. So oh, I appreciate it. We could talk food all day and maybe we should. That's therapy <laughs> for us, for sure. Thanks to both of you for uh, the great conversation. I love the communication is clearly important to both of you. That was clear in the episode that we recorded. That's clear today. So I appreciate both of you being on the show. Thank you. All right. Be safe out there. Keep cooking. It'll make you happy. I promise. All right. You guys have a great day. We can figure out how to. We appreciate it. Nicole, be good. Take care. Yes. Those two are amazing. Uh, like I said, their episode of the full podcast uh, just came out today. Go check out bestservepodcast.com or wherever you get podcasts, Best Serve Podcast. They, uh, it's just a great conversation. They're very heartfelt, super real. Communication is key. Treating everybody, including each other, as guests. And that was very evident in that episode. So listen to that episode. It's about 59 minutes long and it's worth it. You got the time. 
get the feels going. And the conversation continues about what we're going to do, what comes next in the industry as we kind of start to have a little equilibrium in this crazy to say that this is the new normal for the next foreseeable little future to talk about what happens next in the industry. So I'm going to try and do that more and more. Look out later today. We're actually going to be publishing our guest lineup for the entirety of next week as this is going to become a normal thing. And we're going to be on daily, which we have been, but be a little bit more organized and thoughtful so you guys can plan ahead and promote and listen to the people that you know of and a lot of people that you haven't heard of because our mission is hashtag unsung hospitality heroes. I want to talk to a lot of people that are in the industry, in the trenches that a lot of us, myself included, don't know, but are truly the lifeblood of it all. What do I got? Man, I'm running out of hats. I might have to have a new backdrop, but uh, oh, I haven't worn this hat in a while. This is this was our sixth and final brewed food hat. We did six different designs. The first three were totally mine, and then kind of Betsy was like, "People wear other kinds of hats," you know. I was like, "Really? They do?" So this one was actually inspired by my friend Chris Schooley. Shout out to Chris. He rocks hats like this. And I saw him, I was like, that hat is fly, man. So we did this style of hat. Chris Schooley is in Fort Collins, Colorado. He is one of the owners of Troubadour Maltings, a craft maltster. Shout out to all the craft maltsters, everybody in craft beer. I miss you guys. I can't wait to have a beer. Tomorrow's episode, I'm going to have Kevin Galaba from Friends and Family in Denver, Colorado, He is doing some amazing work. He's always a leader in the industry, bringing people together, supporting, volunteering. And he's got some uh, food meals coming out to people in the industry. Tuesdays and Thursdays, there's pickups in the Denver area. Not only if you're in Denver, I want you to go get fed, people. This is not some kind of handout or charity. This is supporting our family. And Kevin is doing a great job of that. So. Get into that episode tomorrow, and I appreciate you as always. Stay safe. Keep cooking. It's making me happy. Hopefully, it makes you happy. Cheers.